Hey YouTube, it's Mount <laughs> Hey YouTube, it's Mount Olympus Reptiles. And again, supposed to be filmed multiple times a day, so I still got my Hellfire shirt on. But we're not going to talk about Hellfire today. Today we're going to talk about feeding your snakes. It's something we've talked about a few times. I got some visual aids here to help me out as I try to explain this uh, and why I believe the way I believe and why I feed the way I feed. So let's start with uh, you start out. You know, you're you're just happening across this video because you just went to the store and you bought your first snake. You know, maybe you bought it at a show. Maybe you bought it at a big box store. And don't tell anybody on Facebook that because they're going to call you names. Uh, or maybe you bought it from some random dude. Who knows? But you got your first snake and you're going to have to feed your first snake. My recommendation to you is a real simple. Uh, find yourself a local store if you have one. It's the easiest way to do that. Supplies rats. Bop in there. Buy a rat. About once a week. Okay, if it's a baby, you're going to be, you know, a little bit deep. Uh, when you get to an adult, you know, it's going to cost you a little more. But you need to plan if you're going to feed that snake of a food bill, feeding it once a week, it's going to be about this. There's going to be about your food cost. Maybe a little higher because, you know, we got Biden's inflation or Putin's war or so Trump. for how long? About a, I'm sorry, about a month. One month. You know, and... and Prices are going up, again, because you can either blame Biden, blame Putin, or blame Trump. I don't give a shit who you blame, but prices are going up. So we're going to figure on this, though, because this is a nice round bill. So that's one month, right? You're going to spend that every month. So in a year's time, that single snake is going to cost you... Man, we're just going to fucking lay out some cash today, boys. That's how rappers must feel. Uh, Kurt introduced me to Froggy Fresh today. Don't go down that rabbit hole. There's nothing good there. Nothing good there. You find out why James is crying, I think, if you look up Froggy Fresh. So here you go, y'all. We have now fed our snake for a year. Now I'm going to get a little off the rails here as I explain something. Because as we fed that snake for a year, one thing I'll tell you, if you're buying your first snake or you're thinking about it, and you go to an expo, okay, or the store, whatever you go with, and you're looking at a snake, and uh, you go, oh man, I don't want to, I really like this pied, but it's 350 bucks, I better just get the, you know, $75 pastel. Do you see the issue with that? This is one year's time. Get the damn snake you like, because you're going to spend way more money feeding it than you ever will buying it. The difference in that pastel and that pie, you're going to feed that snake for maybe one year. You're going to have that snake for 15 years, 20 years. Might as well get what you want. That's less than one. So we're looking at how much we spend, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 240 bucks. <coughs> That's going to be your food cost every year on a single snake, walking into a pet shop, buying one rat a week at $5 a rat. Uh, I can tell you small rats at most places are a little higher than that, but fuzzies and stuff aren't. So this is just kind of a rough estimate. So how can we fix this, you know, because if you're going to keep going to the store, you know, you're going to end up having to have two snakes now, right? When you got two snakes, this becomes your bill. This becomes your bill, right? This is no fun. I mean, you're catching the drift, I hope, because I'm about to run out of 20s in my petty cash drawer here. So I don't think I'm going to get through all of these. I'm not. That becomes your bill every week, right? And at some point in time... When your bill went from 240 uh, a year up to 480 a year, you're going to say, well, shit, this sucks. I don't like doing this anymore. And I get that. By the way, when you're going to the store, you can feed live or you can feed frozen, whatever your preference is. You might find a little bit of savings doing frozen. Maybe a little bit, but not a whole lot. Uh so how are we going to fix this if you want to get into breeding snakes? Obviously, if you're going to breed snakes and you're going to have, say, 10 snakes, you cannot afford for, like what we talked about here, let's make, let's do something different, okay? Let's just do something different. Let me put, pick up all my money. Pick up all my money. Don't ever leave your money laying around. Uh, for those of you in Canada, your money's the same. It just looks funny, I guess. I don't know. So question for my British and Canadian friends, uh, or whatever. Now that... And I'm, this is not meant to be mean. This is actually a question. Okay, I don't really know the answer. Uh, and maybe it doesn't really amount with Canada, because, I mean, there's about 15 countries I think it amounts to. Now that the Queen is dead, and we have King Chuck, does your money change? Do we start printing money with King Chuck on it? Or do we just keep the Queen on stuff? 
Does she get to stay there? I mean, we don't put new presents on ours. You know, like, this guy died a long time ago, and he's still hanging out. Uh, but I'm just, I'm just curious. Does it now change with a new monarch? This is the first time there's been a monarchy change in my lifetime, right? So I really don't know. Uh, so somebody answer in the comments. Are you going to get some King Chuck dollars, or is it going to stay Queen Lizzie? I'm just curious. So let's say you get 10 snakes now. We're going to have to go to that pet shop, buy rats for 10 snakes. One snake for a month. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. This becomes your feed bill every month for ten snakes. You know, this is enough to post on your Instagram and look cool, y'all. Like that's two hundred bucks. So that's going to be two hundred times ten is two thousand, twenty four hundred dollar a year feed bill. Okay. For most people, this is not a sustainable way to raise ten snakes. I'm going to tell you don't do that uh if you want to give your local pet shop money okay they'll gladly take it from you but this is a bad idea for a sustainability in a business when you got 10 snakes let's say uh let's quit doing that and how about we just go and we order rodents from uh one of our here i'm gonna tell you all another trick in life okay you have two ways to keep your money two ways and only two ways you can fold your small bills on the outside like so this means you're less likely to get robbed, okay? Because people don't see a flash as much cash. And you can fold your big bills on the outside like so, which means you're more likely to get laid because people do see your cash. This is how you fold your bills when you're young. This is how you fold your bills when you're a little older and actually have some bills that you don't want to get robbed. Just going to throw that out there, y'all. Uh, <laughs> one of them things. And these make a fine money clip. So... How are we going to lower that bill? Well, it's really simple. There's a bunch of online vendors you can go look at. You have an option of Frozen Thawed. If you want to maintain feeding live and you just absolutely don't want to go to Frozen Thawed, uh, your other options, depending on where you live, you may be able to find a local rat breeder who's willing to sell to you for a much better price than the pet shop. Go do that. Stop spending that much per month. It's not going to help you. Uh, your snakes are costing you as much money as it should cost you to eat for a month, and that's a problem. So, you know, if you can find your local rat breeder, you're going to save a lot. If you just go to, like, you know, I'm not here to advertise for any company. I'll tell you, we used to use Rodent Pro. Uh, there's a bunch of other ones out there, but Rodent Pro was very convenient for me. That Rodent Pro also does show deliveries, so I could place an order and pick up at show, which I would do frequently. And we would order every couple of months, maybe three or four. We'd have one large rat bill, and that would last us a long time. We had a freezer space for it. We thought out what we needed. It's a very good way to do that. When you're in the intermediate range, you know, you've got maybe, let's say, anywhere from 5 to 15 snakes. I think you're in a good spot using Frozen Thawed or a local rat breeder. Uh, both have their pluses and minuses. If you're dead set on live, you're going to have to do a local rat breeder. Frozen Thawed, the nice thing is going to be that uh, if something doesn't eat, you can simply refreeze it. You can also buy in bulk. Well, one shot, only refreeze those once, by the way. Don't don't ever refreeze them more than once. So when we would refreeze something, we would mark it separate, and that would be the first thing we'd go to feed off to try to eliminate waste. Um, just a little, little tip there. You know, you can buy in bulk. You're not having to do weekly rat runs and shit like that. You don't have to worry about them running out. It's Rodent Pro. They don't run out very often, and you're, you're going to stock up when they have it anyway. Uh, so, you know, there's some definite conveniences there. However, there's going to come a time, and it usually is going to be from that 15 to 25 snake range is where I think it was for us, and I think it's a good spot to look at this, that uh, now you're a business. You know, you're, you're obviously trying to breed snakes. You know, most people aren't keeping 20 snakes just to fucking keep them. Uh, so the monetary aspect of your food cost and your overhead become very, very important. Uh, and I don't care if you're a guy with a business who makes, you've got millions of dollars to spare, okay, or if you're a guy who's just starting out and having to start out hard luck and doesn't have any or very much startup money. You know, people who have a lot of money have a lot of money for two reasons. One, they inherited or won it, or they got famous rich. I guess three reasons. Inherited or won it, got famous rich, like your athletes, your movie stars, whatever. Or three, because they were really damn good with their money. Most of the people who are rich, believe it or not, fit in category three. Not very many are in category one or two. They're just the ones we see the most of. But Category 3 folks 
aren't wasting their money. So they're going to look for the ways to keep their overhead down while producing the best product they can. Um, that's when you get into breeding your rodents. You may have a one-time investment either in building your racks or buying your racks. And then you're going to have a food bill and a litter bill. But you can have, I think we ran the numbers one time and not including the racks. Okay, We, we built our, our first racks. When we first got into this, and again, this was before the Biden, Putin, Trump inflation, depending on whoever you want to blame. Um, we could just make up one big name and, and just blame them all. How would we just blame politicians? And political inflation and COVID and everything else that screwed everything up. Uh, we estimated it was costing us, wasn't it 10 cents, Kurt, to produce a pinky, roughly? I figured it out for small, and it was, I think, either 65 or 75 cents per small for us okay. to produce. So we'll go 75 cents per small for us to produce. That's, you know, that probably includes a little Biden inflation. That's so that, a f- And that included uh, me working, so no employees, and it was just the food and litter cost of rats. So food and litter cost, 75 cents to produce a small. So now when you're feeding your 10 snakes, you're doing it for 7.50 a week, right? So where we showed you that, that monthly bill was... Uh, you know, for 10 snakes, it was got awful. It's 200 bucks, right? Now, you're going to be doing that for about that guy. I guess I was ill prepared. I got one in here. And that guy. You went from $200 a month to $30 a month. That means you're going to feed your 10 snakes for the year for roughly $360 versus. Two thousand four hundred dollars. That is a huge savings, y'all. Huge savings. There's also a way you can cut this down even lower. You know that guy on Facebook I told you to go find, who's selling his extra rats to people. Be that guy on Facebook selling your extra rats to people. I'm not telling you to become a rat producer. There are dudes who do just that. They do great at it. What I'm telling you is, if you want to get rid of this overhead, all you got to do is, even if you're going to sell rats at a wholesale cost. If you sold 10 rats at $3 a piece every month, you just got your 30 bucks back and you're producing your food for free. 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 Free food. And that scales up and scales up and scales up as you scale up. So, the point that I want to make is how do we suggest feeding your snakes? Not by size or anything like that. We've done plenty of guides on that. By literally how you do it. If you just got a pet snake, just keep it simple. You don't want to mess with breeding rats and the work and the rat cleaning and the smells of rats and rats who die and, and, and like rats who cannibalize their babies on occasion and all the shitty things that happen with rats. You can tell I'm not a big fan of rat breeding. That's why Kurt does all the rat breeding and he's looking at me like that stuff doesn't happen very often, but thanks for making it sound terrible. Uh, don't, don't mess with all that. If you have one snake or two snakes, just go down to your local shop. You have a pet. Don't try to cut your overhead. It is what it is. Buy what you need. Get it taken care of. When you start getting to that number of 5 to 10, it's probably time to start saving yourself some money doing the frozen thawed route or the local route. When you get past maybe 15 for sure, you should be breeding your rats. From that 10 to 15 mark, you know you're going to get there. Start getting your money down to get your racks or build your racks, get your process, figure out where to buy your rat food, uh, co-ops, uh, feed stores, things like that. You know, don't use shitty ass dog food. Okay, don't don't do it. Get good food. Think about it like this: This is what you're going to put into your snake, right? You want the highest quality meat to go into your snake. You're going to get the highest quality meat by feeding it high quality food. Uh, so it doesn't matter. It does matter. Think about the cow you eat. Do you want to eat a nice, good, grain-fed cow raised right here in the Midwest from a good old Kansas farm, or do you want to eat some nasty ass shit that's like? Never like no. You want the good meat, right? With the good marble. Ivy. Yeah. So does your snake. Get it the good meat. Get it the healthy meat. Feed your rats well. So buy your feed specific, you know, and just do it. Because once you have that, it makes this tolerable. Because I showed you 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So my food bill would not be $240 a week or a month, sorry, it'd be $2,400 a month for $24,000 a year. Uh, that's for 10 months, actually. you got to add another 
It's like twenty-eight, almost twenty-nine thousand dollars a year. If I was going to go and buy rats at a retail price, breeding rats and parting with the extras will save us twenty-nine thousand dollars a year. That is direct money that translates to your pocket. And that's me only counting the adult tubs. It's way worse when you're bringing and adding those babies in, right? Because you're going to have how many babies and they're eating food too. Their food's cheaper, but you got a lot more of them. So keep that in mind. If you're going to do this, you need to come up with a plan for breeding rats. Or you need to keep it very small scale and understand that that's going to eat your profits. Craig, you want to add about this being the rat guy in the room? Um, a couple other ways we've found to... Um cut your cost mm. is we've actually had people that had you know 10 15 20 snakes offer to come in and help clean the rats and their pay was they get rats to feed their snakes yes so you can also find that rat guy on facebook and volunteer a little labor is what kurt's saying and instead of taking cash get rats that's been done all, all the time works out great uh one quick thing on live versus frozen thawed so if you breed your own rats can you do frozen thawed? Yes. If you want to, you can. You can build yourself a chamber. You can gas them off in masses. You can package them up, and you can put them in the freezer. As a matter of fact, I'm going to recommend you do that to some extent. Because when you're in the middle of baby season, you're going to have... Your needs are going to be really high sometimes and really low sometimes. When your needs are low, you know, let's freeze off some... Like, like a squirrel. Put nuts in the tree for winter. That's what you're doing, right? Freeze some off. Uh, have some frozen thawed ready to go in case you need it. So that way when most of your pinks are getting eaten by your babies, you can still feed your adults. Okay. Um, but if you want to do anything frozen thawed, you absolutely can. I personally don't. And I recommend against it. Here's the reason why. It's not... I'm not looking at it from a what's more humane thing. And there's a whole different conversation on that. Uh, what I'm looking at it from is this. If I'm breeding my own rats, I have a rat colony, and I'm feeding 100 snakes, and for us, our rats and our snakes are in two different locations. So Kurt drags up all these rats. We go through, we feed these things in a cycle, and out of those 100 snakes, let's say 80 of them eat. Okay, That means I've got uh, 20 rats left over. Well, if I was doing frozen thawed, now the only way to do that economically is to start playing this guessing game. Well, i got 100 snakes. How many might I eat this week? Well, you know, but I'm probably only going to get 70 of them to eat. And so now I'm only thawing 70. Oh, well, shit, they all got fed. Now i got to thaw some more. Or I'm refreezing a bunch. And I got this. It's just not as much. It's not as. It's more time consuming. And there's more waste. You're going to throwing out more rats. When we do live, we bring a rat for everybody. And what doesn't eat simply goes home and goes right back into the colony. Right? So we're... It just goes right back. No problem. Uh, so there's very, very little waste. The only waste we have in rats are feeding babies because the way we, we do choose to leave food for babies so they can eat at their leisure. Um, and also the occasional rat or snake that will kill a rat and not eat it, uh, which we do have on occasion. Pretty rare, but your waste gets very, very low. It takes a lot less time. If I was asking Kurt to gas off all the rats and freeze them and then bring them up here, then I was having to thaw them that many we would be investing probably twice the amount of time into what we're doing. Which we ain't got time for that. Time is also money. Um, so we do feed life. To save on waste and to save on time. That's the two main reasons for us. Uh, you can do what you want to do. Uh, if it's just too much for you to do live, I get it. I'm not going to judge you. So, Craig, else you want to add on that? No. Nope. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We're going to go over to Patreon. We're going to talk a little bit more about rat stuff, specifically some of the things that uh, you can do as you start. I'll probably actually have Kurt cover some of that. He wasn't planning on that, but I've been trying to think about how to do Patreon since he is the rat king. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.